Good morning and welcome to the Daily Tanya. Today is Sunday, the 22nd day of Tammuz. Let's begin with Tzedakah Gedela. Tzedakah Shemekarebes Esageula. Tzedakah brings Mashiach closer. And today we're learning Chapter 5 in Yigar Satshuva. We learned in the previous chapter about the connection of the Neshama to the name Avaya. Hashem's name while the entire creation is created with the name Elohim, the Neshama is connected with the name Avaya, a higher level name of Hashem. And we explained how they correspond that just Avaya is, um, includes in it all the ten attributes, the same thing in the Neshama, you have all these ten attributes as we explained yesterday. And the Alter Rebbe goes on to explain now, that this neshama, the highly holy spiritual neshama, in order to bring down to this world and to be uh, enclosed in the body, Hashem also used speech. So while we explain the difference between the all the creation that is created with speech, as you remember, versus the neshama, the neshama it says vayipach be'apo. Nishmas Chaim, Hashem blew into his nostrils the soul of life. And we explained that the, diff- the difference between speaking and blowing, when you speak, you use external powers. When you blow, you use your internal powers. And the same thing is when, by creating the, all the entire creation, Hashem used the external powers using speech. And when it, when created the soul, use the internal powers comes from within Hashem to create the soul. But the, but now we're saying that this is the soul the way it was created. But in order to bring it down into the body, Hashem does use speech, and the speech is Nase Adam. Hashem says, "Let us make a man." And Al Rebbe explains that even though it was a used speech, but the speech that is used by the neshama is the internal aspect of speech. And the internal aspect of speech is represented in the fact that it comes from the letter He. The letter He, as we explained, just by the speech, the letter He is the source of all speech, the breath that comes with all kind of words. The He also representing the numerical value of five, which represents the five ways of articulations of letters. So the letter He represents the internal aspect of speech, which means that even when the Neshama is in the body, it is done with the internal aspect of God's speech. And based on this, the Alter Rebbe explains the difference. Why? When a person commits a sin, we said the concept of karet. Karet means that when a person commits certain sins, he loses his life, is able only to live until 50 or 60 years old. So the Alter Rebbe explains that the difference between speech and the aspect of the breath, the blowing, when you speak, even if something is blocking, you can hear, if there's a wall blocking the speech, you can still hear behind the wall also. But the breath, when you blow and you put something, you put a blockage, then it doesn't go, it doesn't go past. And the same thing, the idea of the breath, Meaning, when talking about creating the neshama, being that a neshama that is is created from Hashem in the person, it is Hashem is using his internal power, using the breath, so to speak. So when we put up a blockage to this, it doesn't go through. What is the blockage? The only thing that can can block from Hashem, Hashem's will, is going against Hashem's will. That is a blockage to this internal aspect of God's speech that comes to the neshama. 
So let's see inside how the Alter Rebbe explains this. And uh, of course, we have to mention that, um, that all of this is again within the concept of teshuva, how we are able to do teshuva. And, uh, of, and although this will be explained later, we have to fo- uh, we have to stress this point now. Also, or we should always remember that even when we put the blockage, we are able to tap into the deeper aspect of the neshama, which is not affected by the sin. And when we do that, we touch the essence of Hashem, which is not the will of Hashem, but Hashem Himself, the one who has the will. And then we are able to rectify everything what we do. But this is will be ex- uh, explained later on in this uh, book. But for now, the Alter Rebbe focuses on this aspect: why the neshama is affected when we do when we commit the sins. Continues the Alter Rebbe in chapter five of Igeras Atshuva. Mehine amshochas v'yeridas sanefesh alikis lo ilm azel lislabish begufa adam nimshecha miprinas. Now, bringing the godly soul down into this world, into this physical world, to invest itself in a human body, this process resulting from divine speech, meaning the utterance, let us make man. And so this derives from the internal aspect, the source of speech. And who have a alien amarumas beois hey tatoa kaniska la ale? This is the breath of the Supreme One that is indicated in the letter hey. The letter hey, we said the letter hey of Avaya, the four letter names of Hashem, as discussed above. Ukemoishe kasu vayipach be apov nishmas chaim. As scripture states concerning the vestiture of the soul within the body, that he blew into his nostrils a breath of life, and man became a living creature. And as we said, what the Zoya says, that when you blow, you blow from within. And he who blows does so from within him, from his inwardness and innermost being. So thus, even the external aspect of the soul that is vested within the body is vested in an inward manner, albeit with the inwardness of the speech. So the internal aspect of the external level of speech. In this regard, it is unlike the internal aspect of the soul, which animates from the most internal aspect of godliness. Continues al says, this is why the verse says that the connection between a Jew and Hashem is also compared to a rope that connects us, a rope that has many, many strands, many strings. This is then is the meaning of the verse for God's people is a part of God. And Yaakov is the rope of his inheritance. So the Alter Rebbe explains what does that mean? This, the analogy is of a rope whose upper hand is bound and the lower end, uh, the upper end is bound above and the lower end is bound below. So to the upper end, the soul is bound above and, and its lower end is enclosed within the body. The simple meaning 
of the words he blew stated in the reference of the soul vestiture within the body Hashem blew it into him this is to instruct us that just as for example if one blows in some direction and if the, there is any separation or obstruction there, then the, the exalted breath, I'm sorry, the exhaled breath will not reach that place at all. When you exhale, the breath is not reaching. Precisely, this is the case if any obstruction separates man's body from the breath of the Supreme One, concerning which scripture states that he blew. So there's a separation. So when you speak, you have the sound, you have the voice that that can transfer, and then you have also the breath that comes out. The hay, as we said, is the source of all words. The root of all words is the hay, and the hay is the the breath that comes out. That, if you stop, that doesn't go through. And this is the actual breath represents the actual godliness that is invested in the neshama. And therefore, when we put something, a blockage, to stop that, then it doesn't go through. However, the Alter Rebbe is raising another question, but wait a second. How could you stop Hashem? Hashem is everywhere. Is there anything that can block Hashem? Of course not. al Rebbe is going to explain that the only thing that can block is when you go against the will of Hashem. Because here what we are talking, when we are referring to the innermost part of Hashem, the will of Hashem that is expressed in us, which is, which is in the soul. When we allow this to come in, it's here. But when we go against the will of Hashem, which the human being is the only, the only creature that can go against the will of Hashem. So we create a void of uh, the presence of Hashem. We do not allow that breath, that essence, the deeper aspect of Hashem's speech, the deeper aspect of the godliness, we don't allow it to, to come in. That is the blockage. So again, he this well, the Rebbe continues, The truth is, though, that nothing material or spiritual is, is a barrier before him. For as the verse states, do I, do I not feel heavens and earth? Furthermore, scripture states, all the world is full of his glory. Also it says in the Zohar, there is no place of, uh, uh, devoid of him. And there's another verse that says, and in the heavens above and on earth below, there is none else. And he fills all worlds and so on. So since God is everywhere and within everything, it is thus seemingly impossible for anything to act as a barrier before him. What can then be a barrier? Says al Rebbe, the only thing that can stop between us and Hashem is the, is the sins. Elokim Eshekosu B'Yishaya, as it says in the prophet Yishaya, Ki imavinei seichem oyom avdilim beineichem lebein elekeichem. So he says, rather, as, as Isaiah declares, only your sins separate you from your God. Now again, here the focus is here, it's important to understand, the separation is not, it doesn't say it, it separates God from us, it separates us from God. Why? Because again, Hashem Himself is above His will, and we are able to do teshuva, and that is will be discussed later in this book. Continues the Alter Rebbe and says, "Vatam lefishem neged rotz neliyam baruchu amechayes akol." 
The reason is that sins oppose the will of the Supreme One who gives life to all. As in this verse, whatever God's will, God wills, He has done in heaven and earth. It has been noted above that the Supreme Will is the source of the sustenance issuing from the Tetragrammaton, the name Avaya, and is represented in the thorn atop the letter Yud. So therefore, this is the will of Hashem. The will of Hashem is the source and root of Avaya, and therefore, when we go against the will of Hashem, we cut off that flow from the will of Hashem through the name of Vayin. This then is the meaning of excision. Meaning that you cut off. The rope drawn from the final hay in the four-letter name of God, is severed, it's cut off. So as a result, the soul clothed within the body is unable to receive vitality from its source in that divine name. During those times, when the Jewish people received their vitality, vitality only from the side of holiness, as for example, during the period of the temple, as the Alter Rebbe will say in the next chapter, so the lack of this life force led to physical death. This will like explain later that but that then, back then people received their life directly from the spiritual aspect. The physical life was connected directly to the spiritual, and that is why when we cut off that spiritual flow, it affected the physical life. As the verse says in the Parshas Emma, in the poor in the Torah portion Emma, that soul, that soul shall be cut off from before my face. I am God. So the, the, the before my face, Melafonai also has the meaning of from my innermost, like Penim, inside. Milafonai daike. The expression chosen is from is before my face, meaning the soul is excised from the innermost aspect of godliness, the tetragrammaton. So that happens when a person violates a sin, which is karet, which is cutting off. Just just like for example, a human being has many limbs, many organs. There are certain organs that are vital organs. If God forbid those organs are cut off, you cannot live. Then there's other organs that affect the health, but not as much. It not, doesn't affect the life directly. Other sins that do not incur ex- excision. They do cause at least a defect in the soul, in the sense of the defect or nick, like a nick that is invalidates a blade for ritual slaughter. A blade to slaughter needs to be smooth, and there is a nick, something that is not smooth, that means there is a little damage there. And the same thing is the other sins that cause some damage to the rope, that connects us with Hashem. This is analogous to a thick rope woven of 613 thin strands. So too the rope of the downward flow mentioned above, that the Neshama is connected like a rope to Hashem is comprised of the 613 mitzvahs, each mitzvah being an individual thin strand. When one violates one of them, God forbid, 
a thin strand consisting of that particular commandment is severed. Should an individual violate many commandments, God forbid, then many strands are severed. And the rope is severely, uh, is uh, grievously weakened. So sins punishable by excision or death by divine agency, they cause the entire rope to be severed, God forbid. But nevertheless, says the Alter Rebbe, even after, even if a person, God forbid, committed such a sin, even back then, a sin that cuts off completely, nevertheless, the person remains alive to the age of 50 and 60. And how so? Because there, it remains a remnant, an impression of the original connection that the Neshama has. So it's when, when you cut off, the life, there's an the impression of the soul still remains that keep, gives somewhat of life to the body to continue to live. However, even if one has incurred excision or death, there yet remains an impression within him of his divine soul. And through this, he may live until 50 in the case of excision or 60 years in the case of death, of death by divine agency, but not more. But no more. Continues, the Alter Rebbe says that there is a statement from the Arizal that says that a person like this receives life from the uh, transcendent life force. There is a higher level of the Neshama that c- remains alive. So the Alter Rebbe says that does not mean that, the, that this gives him physical life. It's the spiritual life. So that in this time, a Jew has, even if he committed those sins, is he still considered a Jew, considered holy, can be counted as a minion. You know, he still remains Jewish. He has this Jewish neshama. That comes from the higher level of the makif level of the neshama. As to the statement attributed to the Arizal, that makif, a transcendent level of life force, enters such an individual and so on. This is irrelevant to the life of the, of the physical body, which cannot survive once there remains no vestige of the divine soul. But it applies only until 50 years, or to the contemporary period, as will be noted in the next chapter, what we said, that in contemporary period, meaning in today's day and age, al Rebbe will explain in the next chapter how come we do continue to live after age 15, 60, even people who violated those sins which means that it gives us also more opportunities to do Teshuvah. So that is the end of this chapter, and we shall continue Metzeshem tomorrow with the next chapter. Have a wonderful day.